Bueno, bueno, bueno. Déjame un minuto, por favor. Okay. Let's let's begin by telling you who we are. Um, I am Dr. Robert Dull. ¿Y qué significa es doctor en en uh, estudios um, medioambientales? Okay. Doctor, significa es que yo tengo mi doctorado. Yo doy clases en la univers universidad igual que el doctor Andy Fiore. Entonces, nosotros somos maestros, profesores en la Universidad de Texas. Y yo soy representante del de, um, Instituto de Ciencias Medioambientales, de Estudios Medioambientales en la uni Universidad de Texas. Entonces, ¿tienen algunas preguntas sobre lo que estamos haciendo en, en, en el instituto? ¿Qué piensa que hacemos nosotros? Medioambientales, environmental, ok, so the, the Environmental Sciences Institute. Huh? We study the environment. We study all kinds of things. What, what, what does the environment include? It includes the atmosphere, it includes plants and animals, it includes geology. Uh, incluye casi todas las cosas que nosotros podemos ver afuera cuando, cuando pasamos por el medio ambiente, ¿verdad? El, el, uh, uh, estudios naturales. Bueno, yo, yo no voy a tomar más de su tiempo. I don't want to take up too much of your time, pero me gustaría uh, introducir uh, el doctor Di Fiore, quien va a ser... Um, ¿Quién va a darles una presentación sobre monos? ¿Quién le gusta a monos? ¿Qué tipo de mono le gusta más? ¿Chimpanzee? ¿Al ¿Algunos otros? Spider monkeys. Oh, now we're talking. Vamos a hablar de spider monkeys today también. Araña, mona araña, ¿verdad? Um, ¿Algo más? OK, bueno. Um, ha, do you know that, do you know mono congo? Okay, you know mono conga, which is a howler monkey? What sound does a mono congo make? Wow, wow. ¿Quieren, ¿quieren escuchar más de, del Dr. Di Fiori? Okay, Antonio Di Fiori, um, bienvenidos y muchas gracias. Pero empezamos con un, un poquito de un pequeño video de la Amazonía a la madrugada, ¿no? Escuchamos. Esto es el, la vista sobre el, el bosque amazónico, ¿no? Esa sombra de jaguar, ¿sí? ¿Puedes ver ahí? ¿Sí? Los jaguares son, son predadores de muchos tipos de monos. Pues vamos a hablar un poco de monos. Ups, ¿qué hice? Ay. Vamos a hablar un poco de primates o de monos y por qué estudiamos a los monos y los tipos de estudios que hacen los científicos como yo que trabajan en, en, Amazónica con, en el bosque amazónico con monos. No sé si ustedes han visto 
un árbol de evolución de seres humanos antes. Pues aquí es un ser humano, ¿no? Y estas uh, líneas blancas son representa es una representación del bosque de relaciones entre humanos y diferentes tipos de primates, ¿no? Todos esos otros animales ahí son primates, son, un, uh, son miembros de todo el grupo de, de organismos a que involucra los seres humanos. Pues nosotros somos primates y tenemos mucho en común con primates. Por ejemplo, si puedes ver aquí el chimpancé o el orangután acá o los monos de monos arañas que están acá, todos de nosotros tenemos manos. Eso es una de las cosas que um, es una parte de la morfología de primates, todos los diferentes primates. Pues si puedes ver, aquí es el cráneo de un primate y es muy, muy parecido al cráneo de un ser humano. Los ojos están um, orientados adelante, así. Y si tenías... Los, los, si ves las manos, las manos de un ser humano y las manos de un primate, no ser humano, son casi igual. Pues nosotros somos primates y estudiamos primates en bosques como la de Amazonía porque son nuestros parientes. Y estudiar el comportamiento de primates es conocer algo del comportamiento de seres, seres humanos. Voy a hablar de los diferentes tipos de primates que hay en Amazónica. Y no, yo y mis compañeros trabajamos en Ecuador. ¿Está bien? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I can speak in English very easily. And I'm butchering Spanish for you, I know. So I, I will, I'll, voy a hablar, voy a tratar de hablar en inglés y también en español, ¿OK? Yeah. Well, me and my colleagues, we work in the country of Ecuador. Ecuador está ahí indicado donde hay la estrella. That's Ecuador up there, where the star is. And there's an immense variety of primates. Un can, una cantidad grande de diferentes tipos de primates that you can see in Ecuador, que puedes ver en Ecuador. Vamos a hacer. Here are eight different primate species that you can see in Ecuador in other parts of Amazonia. So I showed you this skull. Esto es el cráneo, es a skull of a monkey called a woolly monkey. That's the one on the top left there. They are the cutest monkeys, son los más adorables monos que puedes imaginar. Son de este part, porte, uh, uh, cinco a uh, siete kilogramos. They weigh about 12 to 15 pounds. And they are mis monos favoritos. They're the monkeys that I like best. But there are a whole bunch of other monkeys. Hay muchos otros diferentes tipos de monos que puede encontrar ahí, that you can find in the, in the forests there. So we have, I'm going to go through these, and I'm going to try to imitate the sounds of some of them for you, because if you imagine that you're in a big, open space in Amazonia, con muchos ruidos de diferentes animales, the monkeys are only part of what you'll hear, but they're the ones that I know the best. So, There's a sake monkey right there, the one that's got the little white patches over his eyes. The next one is a titi monkey, which is a little tiny, muy, muy cute. ¿Cómo se dice cute en español? Bonito, muy bonito. Más o menos este tamaño. Ese mono, si, si, si cierres los ojos, if you close your eyes, and imagine that you're in an Amazon forest at dawn, you hear lots of birds chirping. Close your eyes. Put yourself in the Amazon. Cierren los ojos. Pretender que están en Amazon. When you wake up in the morning, this is your alarm clock if you work in, in Amazonia. It's a TD monkey call, so just wait for it. Wait for it. Close your eyes. Sounds like this. It's pretty funny, right? So that call, este sonido, hacen una pareja de monos. Un macho y una hembra. A wife and a husband. A male and a female. So a pair does that call. And one of them goes, ah, 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 ah. And the other one goes, ah, 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 ah. 
And when you put the noises together, it's <laughs> So they do that right at dawn. And it wakes up me when I'm sleeping in my cabin in the forest and ready to go out. So what are the other monkeys here? That's a uh, That's a, a night monkey, a mono nocturno. Mono aullador, that Rob introduced me saying, I, that's the one that goes like this. It sounds like it's burping a lot, but a really long kind of, you drink two liters of Coca-Cola kind of burp. Um, this is a capuchin monkey. This one is a bebe leche. Alguien me puede decir por qué se llama bebe leche? He drinks milk, but, but why is he called a milk drinking monkey? Because he's got milk on his face, exactly. They have this beautiful little white mustache. This is a squirrel monkey. And then the last one. Yeah. And this is a spider monkey. Spider monkeys are the coolest monkeys. So I like woolly monkeys a lot, but spider monkeys are the coolest monkeys. So spider monkeys, I'm going to do a spider monkey call for you. Spider monkeys are the, son los monos que nosotros estudiamos más que todos los otros. Todos los demás. Esto es un mono araña. Listo? That's pretty good. So, when we are out looking for spider monkeys, cuando vamos al bosque para tratar de encontrar a los monos arañas, hacemos ese ruido y ellos contestan. Y nosotros seguimos los monos por, por sus sonidos. Spider monkeys are really cool because they have a, a a feature of their morphology called a prehensile tail, una cola prensil. Eso es una cola prensil ahí. This, you can see it here on the side. Se pueden. It's hanging with no monkey. Why? Somebody tell me why it's hanging with no monkey. Why? Why? You got it. Because its tail fell off. Well, no, if you imagine. The crocodiles down here have done a big jump up and eaten one of the monkeys, right? Yeah, so that's why the tail's there. But that's just to show you what a prehensile tail is. Una, una cola prensil es una cola que se puede soportar todo el peso del cuerpo del animal. There are very few animals that have a prehensile tail. Possums, you guys might know. Spider monkeys. Y unos otros tipos de monos también tienen una cola prensil, pero es una característica de este grupo de monos. Kangaroo, Kangaroo has a big, fat, muscular tail, but not a prehensile tail. There we go. You guys know what these are? Right. So why am I showing a picture of these things? Because they eat them. They eat monkeys. Uh, Aguila arpía, a harpy eagle, es, es el, el águila más grande en todo el mundo. Se puede encontrar ese en Amazonia y también en, en partes de Centro América. Y el jaguar o el tigre, jaguar or a, or a leopard, sorry, jaguar or a, a puma is another kind of, you use tigre for puma as well, but jaguars and pumas are probably the most important predators on spider monkeys. Okay, so we have another little video que vamos a... Mostrarte que esto es un jaguar acá y vamos a ver unos monos arañas después de eso. Everything here lives in fear of the jaguar, even those that watch from above. Spider monkeys would seem safe. Every week or so, they go down. They're so cute. So that's a salt lick on the floor of the forest. Lake. It's a lot of visitors. So it's a big open muddy area. Lots of animals go to salt lakes. So there's a deer 
Los animales comen el lodo y toman el agua que está en, el, en, en ese saladero. Yeah, it doesn't taste very good. I've tasted it. It doesn't taste very good. Well, when you study monkeys, you have to study what they eat. Es un loro, un parrot. Está comiendo el lodo. Y los monos arañas vienen al suelo para comer el lodo también. Para to, they come to the ground to eat the clay at those mineral licks also. But that's where they're at risk from being attacked by a jaguar. So they're very cautious. Do you think you'd go down and eat some of that clay if you were there? That's what they do. They hang on branches close to the ground. I don't have a prehensile tail. If I did, I would demonstrate. But they hang like this upside down sometimes, and they'll suck up or drink up the water from Aralogua. You can um, go ahead a slide, Melinda. So there are other, son otros, muchos otros animales en Amazonia. Esto es un macaw, un guacamayo. Guacamayo, sí. También, uh, Melissa, Melinda. Y esto se llama una conga, o una, una hormiga de, de, de fue. No, no, es mucho más grande que una hormiga de fue. Uh, una hormiga de, ¿cómo se dice? Bullet. Uh, un ¿Cómo se dice bullet? bullet? Balazo. 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 De bala, de bala. Una hormiga de bala, porque cuando se pica a esa hormiga, es parecido ser pegado por una bala. Ouch. Son muy grandes. No, son, no viven acá, viven en, en Amazonía, pero son casi este tamaño. They do. They bite you and they sting you. Yes, I have been bitten many times, stung many times by those ants. Okay, pues vamos a hablar un poco. Yes, you have a question. What's that? It looks like it has two heads. It has one big head, and then its butt is really big. Its butt where its stinger is really big. So it's it's hard to say which, you know, if you don't if you don't know what they look like, it's hard to say which is the front end and which is the back end. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we find monkeys and how we follow them. And we're going to give you a little bit of a demonstration about this. I came in my field gear today. So estoy vestido como, como cuando voy al, al bosque, excepto no tengo uh, botas de caucho, pero estoy aquí con mis pantalones muy sucios, con mi camiseta de, de campo. If you work in Amazonia, no, you don't sleep in this. This is what what hap what what kind of forest is it? Yeah. A rainforest. So this is a poncho. Exactly. So this is what I wear when I go to the field. What else do I take? Backpack, a GPS. I took take food in my backpack. Yeah, I usually take a lunch box. I have binoculars. And a little bit like Can you go one more ahead? See, this is what we look like. We've got binoculars. Tenemos una cosa para grabar nuestras vocalizaciones, nuestras notas. A dictaphone. Tengo mi iPod aquí. Uso esto para colectar datos. ¿Qué más tengo? Equipo de telemetría. Y vamos a indicar cómo hacemos telemetría. Vamos, we're going to show you how we do telemetry. So, yeah. Rob is going to help us out here. These are radio collars. Anybody know what a radio collar is? Say it loud so we can all hear you. You have to have a loud voice if you want to be a primatologist. Yeah, go for it. What's a radio collar? You can detect something when something's moving. Yeah, so what it is, es una cosa electrónica 
muy chiquita, and it sends out a signal. It sends out a radio signal. It goes beep, 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 but you can't hear it because you don't have a radio to listen to it. That's what this is. It's a radio to listen for that signal. Yeah. It's kind of like sonar, yeah. A little bit like sonar, like you'd have on a battleship. So why do we use, I'm going to tell you how we get radio collars on the monkeys in just a second. Why do we use radio collars? It's because that's a typical shot of the canopy of, a, of the forest where there's monkeys up there. But you can't see the monkeys, can you? Anybody see a monkey in that picture? Yeah. Where? Where? So I heard somebody say yes. Where? In the picture, yes. There. Yeah. So there's a little tiny monkey way up high there. That's one of my students. That's one of the mis estudiantes que no pudo encontrar el mono. Better. Yeah. So it's hard. It's hard to see. El, el collar manda un señal y puedes seguir el señal con esto. Aunque no puedes ver el animal, even though you can't see the monkey, you can follow it using this kind of stuff. So we're going to show you how this works. You guys, some, you, somebody has a collar. There's some collars being passed around, right? OK, so if I turn this on and I start listening, you hear that noise? Hear that noise? That's a signal coming from somewhere in this auditorium. And the antenna should tell me which direction it's going. So I listen for it. And you listen for where the, the sound is the loudest. So it kind of disappeared there, right? I think you've got my collar there. That's the one. So the other collars, this is the only one. Esto es el único que está dando el señal. Los otros collares, the other collars, are no longer functioning. They're old collars. This one is sending out a signal. And so that's what I was listening for. If you point the antenna at the collar, even if you're 500 meters away or 200 meters away, se puede escuchar el señal. Gracias. Thank you. So you can pass this around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you can pass them around. So all of these collars are ones that have been on monkeys in the forest in Ecuador, donde trabajamos. So how do we get the collars on the monkeys? Yes, that's me. With a, with a rifle, with an air rifle. So how do we get the collars on the monkeys? Exactly, exactly. Pues para, para poner el collar alrededor del cuello de un animal, tienes que bajar el animal. Y los animales no quieren bajar para ser, no dicen, ah, oh, por favor, quiero un collar. No, tienes que bajar el animal. Nosotros bajamos el animal con un tranquilizante. We have to dart the monkeys with a tranquilizer dart and catch them in a big net so we can put a collar on them. And so that's what I'm doing there. We've got a, a nice... Looks like a James Bond kind of rifle. It's got a big dart in it that's got a little tiny needle on the front. Y pones tranquilizante ahí. Pegas el animal aquí en el trasero. Y si el animal no cae al suelo, no cae en nuestra red, tenemos que trepar el árbol. We have to climb up the trees sometimes to, to recover the monkey that we dart up in a tree. What if it wakes up? That's a good question. If it wakes up, we give it another shot. Until we, until, until we can measure it, make sure that it's healthy, and we put a radio collar on it. And then once the radio collar's on it, we wait for an hour, we wait for two hours, esperamos hasta que se despierta until it's awake again, and then we let it go with its, with its family again. Yeah, and it's fine after that. Right? And it's fine. Keep going. So this is a picture of us processing a woolly monkey on the floor of the forest. We've shot it in the butt, it's gone like this and fallen over. We've caught it in the net, and then we spread out a, a blanket on the floor. Y hacemos unos medidos, un examen médico para chequear que está en bien salud. And then we put a collar on it and release it. 
This is another example. This is a different kind of monkey. This is one of the TT monkeys that I imitated at the beginning. This is the one that goes, ah, 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 ah. Those are little tiny monkeys, so you have to be really careful when you shoot them. You can't shoot them way up high. You have to shoot them. You have to wait till they come down low because they're very tiny. So that we've, we've uh, so, okay, keep going. Haciendo telemetría como yo hice para ver dónde está un animal. Sometimes we have to get up in the canopy to do telemetry. Sorry for the interruption. Teachers, there was a red flyer in the mailboxes this morning. Some of you already picked them up. It has to do with uh, breakfast information going out to the parents. If you can please send someone to the office or you yourself, bring them to the office. Um, so far today, those in the house are not ready to go out. Thank you. So sometimes we have to climb up to the top of the canopy. This is a nice little platform up in the canopy where we can use our telemetry and listen to, for the animals and then climb back down to the forest floor to go and follow them. That's a very close-up shot of what a different kind of collar looks like. Pues, además de los radio collares, pongamos a veces collares con un GPS. ¿Quién sabe qué es un GPS? GPS. And, and what can you do with the GPS? Find it and track it, exactly. So this is an aerial photograph of the Bosque Tropical donde trabajamos. This is in very remote Ecuador. And all of those lines on there are the lines that connect locations that have been recorded on a GPS that is on a monkey that we've darted and let it go free so that we can track where the monkeys go even when we're not there with them. We can follow their signal through this GPS collar that they're wearing. So that's another way that we study where they go and how they interact with one another. The other thing that I want to tell you about, who knows what DNA is? Parte de, de su cuerpo, no? Right, it's, it's something that you can use. It's in everybody has DNA. It's what makes up, it's our genetic material. So we work with DNA. We can do a DNA fingerprint for the monkeys. And we can know how the monkeys are related to one another. We can study, por ejemplo, quiénes son los padres de este chico. Por ejemplo, si tenemos una muestra de ADN de un juvenil, podemos decir cuáles de los otros animales en el grupo son sus parientes, who are, who are part of their family by studying DNA. The cool thing, and I think you're going to appreciate this, the cool thing about DNA is that it's in all of our cells. It's in your spit. It's in your hair. It's in your tissue. It's in your blood. It's also in your poop. It is. It is. So if you think about it, we capture just a couple of the monkeys. But we can capture the poop of all of the monkeys. They're 30 meters up in the tree. They can poop down. And we can get something from them that has their DNA in it. So if we want to study their DNA, that's how we do it. We get pooped on. How many, how many of you have been pooped on by a monkey? Has anyone been pooped on by a monkey besides Rob and me? You have? Yeah. It's a spe and you have, excellent. Okay. It's a very special feeling. Es algo muy especial ser cagada. Tener cagada de uno mono en su cuerpo. Can you go back one more? So, so this is the typical way that we get our samples for scientific work from monkeys. We follow them around. We watch them with binoculars. Ellos son muy arriba, 20 metros, 25 metros arriba. Esperamos hasta que cagan. Acá, acá, acá. Y sacamos la cagada para guardarlo. And I didn't. Melinda, Melinda asked if I would bring monkey poop to share with you today. I did not do that. I spared you guys that. So that's the best way to get it. The other way that you can get monkey poop, which is muy, muy inteligente, yo creo. Hay unos, hay unos um, ¿cómo se dice? Beatles. Señora, ¿cómo se dice Beatles en español? Escarabajos. Que usan la cagada para poner sus, sus huevos. Pues, these are called dung beetles. They're very special. There's a lot of different kind of dung beetles in Amazonia. That's one there on the left, rolling up a nice little ball of monkey poop for us. Once they do that, they kick out all the seeds. So it's just basically, forgive me here, a pure ball of poop. You can pick it up, and we put it in a little container. We wear gloves. You can see we're wearing gloves there to pick it up so we don't 
mash monkey poop in our hands. And then you shake it up and you get a nice little sample like that. No, it's, it's gross, but it's also cool. Because you can study a lot about their biology by getting their DNA. OK. So a couple, I want to tell you about a couple interesting things that we found. We'll show you one more little video. And then Melinda's going to tell you a little bit about Hot Science Cool Talks. One of the things that we found out by studying spider monkeys over the last six or seven years is that they are very territorial critters. You know what it means to be territorial? They have, they have a home of their own. They have an area in space, una, un lugar donde solamente van los miembros de un grupo. Y esto es una, un ejemplo, una mapa, de los territorios de cuatro grupos de monos arañas. Four groups of spider monkeys. Here's the main one that we get pooped on by all the time. And then there's one, two, three groups around it. Each of these groups, casi todos de estos grupos tienen varios machos y varios hembras. So five to 10 males in a group, five to 10 females in a group. They're like small societies, like big families. And they are aggressive with one another. So the members of one group do not like the members of another group. And you can see those colored areas represent el área en espacio donde, donde andan, but there's white space between those territories. They don't go in those territories. Those are areas where they don't go. If they do go, they fight with members of another group. There are sometimes, and I've put these little dotted lines on here, sometimes where the members of a group will try to pick a fight with the members of other groups. And that's where they go into another group's territory. And that's something that's really interesting. Nosotros no sabíamos que los animales eran así. They have fights. They have war, basically. They try to pelear con, con especialmente los machos, pelean con machos de otros grupos. Does that sound familiar? Have you ever heard of that? The other thing that's cool, and this is the last cool thing I'm going to tell you because then we'll, we'll step on and move on. The last thing that's cool, with our DNA work, con las muestras de heces que tenemos, podemos sacar ADN y usar esa información para saber quiénes son parientes entre el grupo. We can know from our DNA work who's related to who within the group. And you can see, I've listed all of the names of the, ma of the animals in our main study group. The males are over there, Juan, Jerónimo, Andreo, Pedro, Poto, Nenki, and the females are on this side. Nipa, Sari, Vita, Anna, Kawo. The different lines represent individuals who are close relatives of one another. So a, a thick line means that that is a dad and a son, or a mom and a daughter, or two full siblings. So what you can see that's cool, that we know from the DNA work, but we wouldn't know from other work, is that a lot of the males are relatives of one another. And a lot of the females are not. What does that mean? It means that females move into these social groups. And the males grow up in a group, and they've got their brother, their uncle, their dad in that same group. Y el grupo es como un grupo de machos que son parientes. Y hembras que han movido para ser parte de ese grupo. OK? I'm going to stop there and, and let you go on to, to oh, yeah, let's, so I just need to show you one more thing. Yeah. Doo, doo, doo. Why am I a scientist? I like that, that cartoon. There was a, a famous psychologist in the 1960s who did studies with chimpanzees sticking bananas out of their reach. And the chimpanzees were really, really smart. And they used a broom to whack the, the banana and get it. And I think this is kind of a silly cartoon. It's a, a very smart human being not being smart enough to use the tool that's next to her to hit that. Why am I a scientist? Well, it's because I like to study things about human behavior and chimpanzee behavior and other monkey behavior. And we can learn something about human behavior by studying monkeys. The other reason why I'm a scientist is because I had a fantastic, a fantastic professor in college who was very excited about studying monkeys and got me interested in it. And so I hope, yo espero que ustedes find somebody or someone that excites you about science and that you'll consider moving into a career in science. Because there's no other career that I can think of where I get to run around, be in a forest, play with poop, 
use technology all at the same time. Gracias y Melinda va a hablar contigo con ustedes para un, un par de minutos y después si, hay, uh, si tienen preguntas. So if you guys have questions, con gusto contestamos a las preguntas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so why do I wear one thing? The thing that that's a microphone. That's so that you guys can hear us because I have a loud voice, but sometimes it doesn't tape well. So that's why we use a microphone. Oh yeah, yeah. What kind of monkey would you like me to do? I can do uh, gorillas are hard. Gorillas are hard. Gorillas do that, but I can't really do it. They do it really, really. They kind of got a big chest and they and make it loud. I can never do a gorilla very well. Um, the other one that I can do pretty well is a, is a gibbon call. A gibbon is not a monkey. A gibbon is an ape, and it's from Southeast Asia. But they sound like this. And, and I know this because I used to work at the National Zoo in Washington, DC, where they have gibbons. And every morning, my apartment was close by there. And just like in the forest with the titi monkeys waking me up, the gibbons would wake me up. And they sound like this. You ready? Close your eyes. It's better if your eyes are closed. <laughs> I wish I could. They, they, oh, they're very cool primates. Again, they are apes, not monkeys. So the monkeys that I work with are in South America. There are no apes except for people in South America. Orangutans are from Asia. Yes, over there. What's the difference between an ape and a monkey? What's the difference between? Excellent question. The most so obvious question, yeah. it's okay. the most obvious thing that's different between apes and monkeys is apes don't have tails. Oh, yeah. Okay, so if you look at a chimpanzee, if you look at a gorilla, if you look at an orangutan, or if you look at your own backside when you get out of the shower in the morning, you don't have a tail, right? That's, that's a characteristic of an ape. Almost all monkeys have tails. There are some species of monkeys that have lost their tail, but as a group of primates, monkeys have tails. And that's how you distinguish them. Yeah? Have I ever studied baboons? I have studied the poop of baboons. I have not ever been to Africa to see baboons in the wild. But if you come to my lab at UT, I've got about 2,000 poop samples from baboons from all over Africa. So you could come and look at baboon poop in our lab. Do you know how it how does it what? How, does how it a smell? baboon sounds? Well, they they do these calls like, uh, uh, uh. like they're angry. Yeah, it's called a grunt call, and they do it like if if Melinda had some choice food that I wanted, I would walk up to Melinda, and if I were more dominant, I'd go, uh, and Melissa would probably turn around and walk away, and I'd get to eat the food that that Melinda had. Yes. The weird, well, I think the TV monkeys are pretty weird, though. Last, it sounds like they're, they're being strangled a little bit to me. Last question, you guys. Cool. One more question. Right over here, there's one. Yes. So what, that's a great question. What happens if the battery in the collar loses all of its power while we're still while we're still doing the study. We have to go and we have to find that animal again, but without using the telemetry, which is hard. You go, you look around, you say, oh, I think I see something up there. Is it a monkey? I look through the binoculars, no. So we, we know basically where they go, but it's hard to find them. And then once we find them, we have to dart them again, take the old collar off, and put a new collar on. It takes a long time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Muchas gracias por venir y escuchar a nosotros. Y ojalá que vamos a ver las ciencias Gracias a todos por venir.